name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you this evening as we gather as a community of faith before Christ in the Blessed Eucharist. On behalf of Shalom World Prayer, you are most welcome. And I can assure you that you are all very much woven into this prayer this evening. We settle ourselves in the presence of Jesus himself and we bring our intentions for our sick this evening. Those that we carry in our hearts, those that we are concerned about, of course. So let's take a moment just to bring to mind all those who we are praying for very much at this time. I would like to pray for Bridget, who is in hospital at the moment, suffering from cellulitis. We pray that through the auspices of the doctors and nurses, she will make a recovery. I'd like to pray for Jim, who has just returned home after a very long period of time in hospital, after an unfortunate accident. And we pray too that he will settle home well and find his feet once again and get stronger. We remember those this evening who suffer from bereavement, which is painful in itself, as we all know. We pray for healing there too. So many people have been affected by this. And yet we can journey with each other with a sense of empathy. So we remember the bereaved this evening. I'd like to remember a niece of a parishioner who sadly, sadly has lost her little baby who died in the womb. So we remember that person and the little child, that little angel. We commend this little child into God's love and care. Unique, and yet even in the shortness of that life, so much has been achieved. We remember the lonely and the isolated to this evening, praying for them, asking you, Lord, to be their constant companion and to grant them your peace. And finally, we might remember those who are suffering from mental illness of any kind, sometimes unseen by the human eye. We commend them, Lord, into your care as well, asking you to, to be with them in the trials and storms that they experience. It is good to know that so many different parishes, monasteries, convents, so many people of great faith, prayer groups, are praying constantly for the sick and for other intentions across the world. Certainly, swprayer.org are endeavouring to do all they can to be that constant companion and supportive prayer. And should you have any requests, please feel free to contact shalomworld at swprayer.org. So we commend all these prayers. We hand them over. We entrust them very much into God's care this evening. Let's maybe place ourselves, place our hearts, our minds, all that we are in God's presence this evening. And just allow the radiance of Jesus' own love and care for us to touch our hearts. So I'm going to sing a little piece of music that will help in this. It's called Be Still and Know I Am With You. 
Be still and know I am with you. Be still, I am the Lord. I will not leave you orphans. I leave with you my word. Be one. You feel the light may be fading. You feel to lose your way. Be still and know I am near you. I lead you to the day and the sun. Be glad the day you have sorrow. Be glad for then you live. The stars shine only in darkness. And in your need I give. My peace. Let's continue our journey this evening. I'd like to take you to an experience of healing, which was a healing that took place at the request of another. Quite unusual in the time of Christ for a centurion to have a sense of care for his servant. Let's enter into this particular scene this evening. Let me take the Gospel of St. Matthew in which we find the cure of the centurion servant. When he went into Capernaum, a centurion came up and pleaded with him. Sir, he said, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and is in great pain. I will come myself and cure him, said Jesus. The centurion replied, Sir, I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Just give the word and my servant will be cured. For I am under authority myself and have soldiers under me. And I say to one man, go, and he goes, to another, come here, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you solemnly, nowhere in Israel have I found faith like this. And I tell you that many will come from east and west to take their places with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be turned out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go back then. You have believed. So let this be done for you. And the servant was cured at that moment. So here we have a chemistry that takes place between Jesus and the centurion. There is a meeting of minds, an understanding, as Jesus looks deeply into the heart of the centurion. Responsible, as his name suggests, for 100 men. Jesus looks deeply into his life and sees the knots, of course, on the one hand, but sees that sense of faith bubbling to the surface. This servant was someone on whom the centurion obviously depended. Perhaps the servant was a very 
faithful servant and had been dedicated to that centurion for many years. Perhaps the centurion valued his opinion, his thoughts, his understanding, and saw him more than a servant, but even as a friend. You can hear the sense of pleading with Christ as a servant is at the center of the prayerfulness. It is a beautiful prayer, of course, that the centurion does begin to utter. I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Just give the word and my servant will be cured. Does this remind you of a response that we have when we celebrate the Eucharist? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. It is the centurion who, through the chemistry with Jesus, reveals this wonderful humility, the prayerfulness of openness and healing. Was it just the servant who was healed on this occasion? Could you say that the centurion experienced a newfound belief in Christ, especially when he returned to his home and found that the, the servant was cured? Jesus praises the centurion's faith and belief. What happens to the centurion after this, we do not know. All we know is that the encounter was sufficient to establish a whole new way of life. Clearly, the centurion was sensitive by nature and caring. These qualities come to the fore in a man who has to be strong, disciplined, and a model for the rest of the soldiers in his care. Jesus brings out the best in him. And the centurion is so open, pleading. His prayer is answered. Sometimes in our own lives, we come before Christ asking, pleading, petitioning. Isn't it true that sometimes we wonder how the prayer will be answered or when? I suppose that's the essence of prayer, where we trust, we confide. And we know that Jesus will endeavor to answer that prayer because of his love for us and because we are caught up in that love, especially through our baptism. Let us pause a little moment this evening. Let us think about the centurion and our own lives. Sometimes it's good to step into the picture that the gospel portrays and paints. Sometimes it's good for us to take on the role of the centurion, to step into his shoes or sandals, become a character in the actual gospel, so that it comes alive for each of us and speaks to our hearts. What would Jesus say to, to you and to me if we come before him as we are pleading and petitioning and asking? Let's take a moment to do just that, to ask, to offer, to plead. I'd like just to sing a couple of little verses of Be Thou My Vision. O Lord of my heart, comes from an Irish prayer from the 8th century. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, 
not be all else, for me save that thou art. Thou my best thought in the day and the night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my breastplate, my sword for the fight. Be thou my armor, and be thou my might. Thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Is thou me heavenward? Power of my power. Lord, we thank you for the gift of all those who journey with us and bring us healing in so many different ways. Healing is needed not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Sometimes we look to the saints to guide us and to give us a sense of direction. Some of the saints did not have it easy. Recently, I journeyed with the parish on a pilgrimage to Rome and to Assisi and Loreto. In Assisi, among other places, of course, we came in touch with the tombs of the saints. There was a real sense of walking in their footsteps, to be honest. But I'd always wanted to see and visit the tomb of Blessed Carlo Acutis, someone very special, someone at the age of 15 who had such a wonderful sense of Christ in his life. He died of leukemia and lived, of course, in Milan for majority of his life, even though he was born in London originally. But he loved Assisi and loved the Eucharist and the Eucharistic miracles about which he compiled through the means of technology a whole introduction and journey through these miracles to help us to understand the Eucharist all the more. It is rather fitting that we gather in front of Christ in the, in the Eucharist this evening. But Carlo Acutis had a wonderful way of, and insight into life. He describes the Eucharist as my highway to heaven. And indeed, when visiting his tomb in Assisi, in the church of San Damiano, there was a wonderful sense of the sacred. A little inscription on the wall behind his tomb, where his body can be seen, as if he is asleep, says simply in Italian, non io ma Dio, not I, but God. This is a young saint in the making and someone who can give us a message, a message of hope, a message of healing, he experienced a deep inner peace, even in the midst of his own illness, and reassured his mother that all will be well. Grasping every moment, as he said, not wasting time, but grasping the moment to do all he could to follow Christ. Perhaps this evening, as we think of blessed Carlo Acutis, among all the saints, St. Francis, St. Paul, St. Peter, among so many, surely we can only but be uplifted, reassured, strengthened on our own journey. But didn't Carlo get it right? Not I, but God. Perhaps it's all about abandoning ourselves into God's hands. And then we can begin to experience 
and inner freedom and peace. As we journey this evening, let's just offer our prayers, but also offer our gratitude, our thanks to God for his kindness and love. Perhaps we might pray for our fragmented and broken world and ask God to help us to listen to the cry of the poor, the cry of the earth. I would like to pray the prayer of St. Francis, someone who encountered the leper, the leper who was sick. He rode past him on his horse, but returned and embraced the leper. That night he had a dream in which he saw the leper, and the leper was Christ. Let me finish with a little verse of that famous prayer of St. Francis. As we hand over our prayers for the sick to Jesus, who brings them to the Father. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. Where there's not true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only in light. Where there's sadness, ever joy. Lord, we thank you for this evening. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We ask the intercession of Mary, our mother, model for the church and faith. Guide us, Lord, strengthen us on our journey. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
lost without hope, in a home of restlessness, in a time when the light is not found. Read Shalom Tidings, a gift of hope 